Hi, hello and welcome to my F45 cockpit familiarization and semi-tutorial. So I'll be telling you everything you need to know about the F45 cockpit just to get started and I'll be moving from right to left and then cover the screen. So let's start. So here we have the mic switch. It's just a mic you can ATC Whiskey Bravo 11 requesting takeoff. Yeah, it doesn't work all the time. It's not the most consistent. And then here we can see, sorry, my hand's glitching out. It's moving, but like I can grab stuff, but it's not working. And then here you can see we have a uh, canopy switch, which just opens the canopy. APU switch, it does with its auxiliary power unit. It provides power when your engine's off. My engine's on at the moment, so we can turn it off, but I'll leave it on for now. Main battery, it's a battery. Engine, it's the engine, how you move. You need it to turn the APU on before you can turn on the a, uh, auxiliary power unit. Uh, before you can turn on the engine, you need to wait for the APU to sp spool up. Uh, MP3 stream, it's uh, you can place MP3 files in a folder in the game directory, and that's and then you can control it from there. Inst is your backlighting, on off doesn't, yep, yeah, good at night. Formation lights, these are all your lights, so nav light, strobe light, you'll see them flash there in a sec. And landing lights is a light on your landing gear. Uh, parking brake, it's a parking brake. Fuel port. There is a fuel port right there, you can see it, that's how you do air refueling. Parking brake, parking brake, jettison knob, I'll get to that in a sec. Wings, you can fold your wings up if you're on a carrier. Landing gear, can't go up when you're on the ground, but it brings your landing gear up. VCAP, autopilot, I'll probably do a tutorial about that, and then I'll put my engine back down. Uh, to tilt your engine, you need to push your joystick or your touchpad up or down. So I use a joystick, I use the index controller, so up, down, and then, yeah, cool. And then launch bar is a uh, little bar on your front landing gear that is uh, how you connect to a catapult on a carrier. Hook is how you land on a carrier. I'll probably do a carrier landing tutorial. And then uh, let's move to the miscellaneous button. So HMD, head mounted display, up on. The visor on the F45 is different to the 26, the entire helmet. So you, your visor is just for tilt, not for actual uh, HMD. The HMD is always on unless you turn it off, but then you lose your HUD too. MFD, MFD, seat, up and down, master arm, it's arms or your weapons, and now I can shoot. Um. And then visor, visor, you can do that by the side of your head too, and NVG, night vision goggles, you can do that on the top of your head, on your forehead area. Okay, now I'm going to go over the, the top of the buttons on the MFD, so layout select, if I hold that, and then hold the one button, and now I can just set it, so you can do that for anything, any selection. Pretty good. Uh, clear waypoint, if I have a waypoint selected, so if I just quickly set it. If I, just, uh, if I go to the nav screen, I should be able to. And then I can just clear it, it's gone. Out mode from ASL to radar. See that there? Uh, swap, just swaps it around. Uh, Sorry. And then chaff and flare. Chaff flare. Pressing the B button to do that. Fuel. Estimated time you can stay in the air. Dis how far you could fly. How much fuel you're losing. Your TWR. And then your fuel levels. Uh, external if you have fuel tanks. Internal. Your TWR, if it's above one, you can do a vertical takeoff. It stands for thrust to weight ratio. Then you've got your autopilot also. And then, so nav follows your waypoint. Altitude, you can input an altitude there. Heading, you can input a heading there. And then, uh, yeah, so now I will move on to all the different apps. TSD, this is your main situational awareness display. You can select radar, and this is how you control your radar. Make it so you can move around. And you can, uh, so, and you, it also has a very good data link, so I can select target even though I'm on the ground and probably couldn't see that. And data link, I can see this cruiser in this carrier, even though I can't see them visually. And then you can change the angle of the radar. So then that way it scans quicker, but you see less than your HUD. Basically what shows up on your heads up display, so on your HMD. So if I turn on Ally, you look, I can see that carrier now, uh, that uh, refueler now. And then you've got the range here. And so, yeah. Next one is the EOTS. This is your target and board equivalent, but it's always on the carrier. So you don't need to equip it. So the different buttons are mode. Uh, so you can go in target mode, but if I set it forward, which just resets it to full side, I can go in target. And uh, if I arm, I can go in PIP mode, 
which is basically it just pointing it points where my weapon is pointing so if i had a bomb it will point where the bomb would drop so it's a, essentially like a bomb site then i can change the mode from day night and color I keep it in day forward again and then i can set it to my head which is super cool this is great if you just want to quickly look at something and then what a lot of people don't know if you uh, tap on your touchpad or click in your joystick while you're holding the throttle it will go to normal mode and then that way you can quickly look somewhere click it and then move it more finely and then you've got situation awareness uh like indicator so if you're rolling or, or pitching to waypoint it will basically just lock to where the waypoint is so if i had a waypoint it would go there so that way i don't need to try and do it manually it's a lot quicker gps acquire if i had a gps target it would lock to that gps so if i create a gps with a, a gps send i've now got that gps diamond there and then gps acquire will go there so that's how you and that's how i drop a gps guided bomb i'll probably do a tutorial on weapons uh next page is the rwr this is the RWR. I'll probably do the tutorial on the RWR, just a quick one. But basically, if I say I've got a fighter behind me, it would say F behind me. And I know I'm being getting the, uh, I can see the radar, the, uh, the, like the passive radar frequency bouncing off me. That's what it does. It detects for passive frequency. So even if you're not being locked, you can still see stuff. Uh, nav. This is just a nav page mode changes it to north up reset if you've moved it with soy uh reset just resets it back to you fuel so that's the carrier over there rtb the carrier over there objective we don't have one but if we did it would go to the objective and you can also gps send and this is how you'd make a path i'll probably do a tutorial on the gps's because it can be quite complex for new players so stay tuned for that uh, GPS targets and here you can see all your GPS targets so you can make new groups and in those groups you can have targets and you can delete them set paths which is how you use GPS guided missiles as again I'll do a video on that SMS stores management page you can configure aim 9 to your different modes if I select them so I'm in now this un uncaged vertical head track and caged yeah so it's just a pretty cool way of uh, adding, uh, changing setting. And then also you can go to armed. So now these AIM-120s are disarmed. So it's a good way of making sure you're using the right weapons or you, you want to save some weapons for later, you can disarm them. And jettison. So this is how we use a jettison knob. You select, you, so I've selected the AIM-120 to jettison and then I press, I grip it and I press B and it drops it. I can jump, or if I had external, external will drop all external stores and all would drop all stores as you can see if i start my gun because you can't dump bullets and uh yeah that's the uh, sms and you can also override the bay doors to open which i think is a pretty cool feature it's pretty cool and then there's also sorry i swapped and then also on the sms you've got cms which you can control how um which side chaff is released from and double means two from each and then release rate so if you hold the trigger how many how much chaff is released for each press of the button so you can hold it so now i'm holding it i'm only pressing it once and it's dumping or i can go even higher do something a bit ludicrous yeah so that's fun if you are doing like a flyby or something like that sms and then we've got the objectives page. If we had objectives, we could cycle through them and set waypoints to them, but we don't because we're in a free flight mission. Comms, wingmen, so you can see all your, sorry, you can see all the different options here and all the different targets, uh, um, like people you can talk to. Combat, so you can tell them to attack your target you've locked with your TSD, to disengage entirely or engage. Flight, so this is your wingmen slash your flight. You can orbit around the point, so they'll fly around the point that say they're flying over this point. They'll then fly around it. Form up, get in formation. Your different formations. Tell them to go refuel. Tell them to return to base, or tell them to return to base. To RTB and, like RTB rearm and come back. And then equipment you can radar on or off. So if you want to go stealth, ATC. So you can see all the different ATC contacts. Take off, landing, vertical takeoff, vertical landing. And then AWAX, bogey dope. So bogey dope's all the targets around you. Picture is the around the bullseye, which is a pre-arranged point uh, on the map. And they'll tell you targets around that. So it's good with talking to other people to try and figure out where targets are and where you are. And then request RTB vector. So heading, uh, they'll tell you a heading to RTB. You can do that from the nav yourself. 
And then we have the S cam. So I'm not going to talk about this because it's more about, I'll probably make, do a video on it, but there are some videos on it already from other people. Um, options, you can change your joystick mode to center stick and that changes a bunch of things, which is quite nice. So if you're in the 26, I like doing that, but we're not, so I like keeping it just there. Joystick sensitivity, so how much movement you have to do to compare to how much the flight controls will actually move. You can see like now it's very sensitive, but if I turn it down, uh, now it's a lot less jerky. Yeah, and then you can change the altitude warning and what mode. So if you're in ASL, if you're in radar, so it will only warn you if you're so close to the ocean or if you're so close to the ground actually radar is probably a bit smarter for altitude warning and you can also set max altitude which a lot of people don't know about and then um game so these are game settings so you can quick save so you can save and then if you die you can go back to that quick save you made restart log this is useful if you don't know if you killed someone or if you um experience a glitch or something like that recenter so you can sit comfortably and then press b ignore my hand sorry it's i don't know why it's done that it's literally never happened to me before and you can see your frame rate down there and then oops, hit that by mistake that's funny and then uh last one is radar so you can increase the range you can see stuff but you can't actually select anything from this you can just turn it on or off so i never use this i don't know why anyone would i just stick to the tsd for radar and yep that is everything oh there's one more so if i go full throttle get out of the canopy the last button to press i think you can probably guess what it is it's the ejection seat thank you for watching and i'll see you next time i've been jacko 606 and bye